I thought I'd do a quick little video just to illustrate um, work-based learning using the analogy of surfing. Bear with me, uh, I'm just trying to explain the difference between a work-based learning program such as high degree apprenticeships in the UK compared to other traditional programs within universities and or even a the distinction between that of placements and internships. Uh, which we more broadly call work integrated learning. So this is me surfing uh, a number of years ago, surfing in Lisbon uh, on one of their beaches uh, on the southern side of the river. Um, and the reason why I wanted to start with the analogy of surfing as work based learning is because I think there are a lot of principles which we could apply here, which would be helpful in understanding uh, the expectation of work-based learning. Now, I don't know whether you've tried surfing before. Maybe you've gone to a beach somewhere, I don't know, a holiday in Morocco, or uh, you've been down to Cornwall in the UK and you've uh, booked a surfing lesson. I'm pretty sure that if you have tried, you will uh, remember how hard it was. <laughs> um, you think just standing up on a board on a wave uh, can't be that difficult, but actually keeping your balance is really hard. You keep falling off. Uh, also, um, it's quite draining on your arms. You realize just how much paddling you need to do. Uh, again, obviously, depending on the size of the waves and where you're learning how to surf. Now, in most cases, and I did this back in South Africa, I also did some surf coaching uh, and worked for a, a, a organization called Manta Ray, uh, and I did surf lessons for them. You teach the students uh, on the beach, you get them to line the boards properly so that they're in the right place. You show them how to jump up, make sure that their feet land in the middle of the board, that their stance is a little bit wide, bending their knees in order to keep their balance. And you kind of practice that on the beach. You then send them out into the sea. Uh, you walk in normally with them and you're giving advice as they're doing it. The point I'm trying to make here is that you can watch YouTube videos about surfing. You can read books about it. You can read books about the kind of boards you have, um, the kind of waves there are, what are the best spots around the world. But all this knowledge doesn't help you to actually surf. And I'm going to come to this uh, again a little bit later when I talk about the kind of distinguishing things within knowledge. But what I find in work-based learning, and work-based learning is a student who is full-time in work, right? You're starting your studies already in work, and the idea is that whatever you are studying, you are connecting that to your context, which is work. Now, let's think about work here like surfing. Clearly, particularly if you are reasonably youngish, 18, uh, 19 years old, doing a degree apprenticeship in the UK, You've never worked in a, in, in a company before. It's like going out surfing. You're going to be learning a whole lot of new stuff. Now, the knowledge, and you need the knowledge, is good. But it's not the knowledge on its own that enables you to be successful in the doing of that knowledge. You've got to apply that knowledge and feel what it feels like. This is the same thing with surfing. There's no point in just knowing all about it and making that the only emphasis. I got to get good marks, you know, I got to achieve the knowing. But actually, when you when the rubber hits the road and you go out and actually do the knowing, you, you you're not that good. Right? And this is why I want to use the analogy of surfing. And I'm going to pull out four key things that make work based learning quite different. Now, in terms of traditional student, you are normally not in a work context. You may be working because you're a student and you need income, but it's not necessarily the career you want to be in. What you're hoping to do is use your degree when you finish to go into the kind of career that you want. So in this way, there's a, there's a slight disconnect between what you know and what you will be doing. You're learning for work, right? Whereas a work-based learning program, you're learning in work. Now, again, OK, you have placements, you have internships, um, you have all these different kinds of lengths of experience. But again, I'm going to illustrate this a little bit later, that actually that amount of time that you have within a particular context makes a huge difference. So somebody who, for example, surfs every single day and works on that skill or every single week, 
they will obviously improve in terms of the application of that knowledge over a year compared to somebody who maybe does it every summer holidays. So, you know, they might be doing it for two weeks, but they only do it once a year. The progress compared is massive. And again, this is a key difference in work-based learning. And again, how we can make sure that we're gaining uh, the learning from the theory as we go through that. Okay, so let me introduce you to my first idea. And the first idea is mastery. So this is me. Um, I was 13 years old, uh, and this is in Cape Town in South Africa, when I first started surfing. So uh, this was actually my brother's surfboard. He was three and a half years older than me. Um, he wasn't really interested in wanting to surf. I was. And so uh, I had a bodyboard uh, or a boogie board, um, but I wanted to start to learn how to surf. And so this was one of the summer holidays. Um, I decided to, to take the board, uh, head out into the ocean and learn surfing. And I started when I was 13 years old. Now, a lot of this was just really about standing up on the board, being able to, you know, stand longer than three seconds and actually ride the wave to the beach. Now, in terms of mastery, what I'm mastering here is the ability to, to have balance, right? Um, and we'll come back to this a little bit later because this is one of the things that makes learning interesting. Uh, surfing is a really good analogy because every single day, the waves are different. Different tides, different size, the wind, the amount of people in the water, and you have to adjust what you are doing based on those kind of conditions. The same applies at work. Just because I've learned a particular skill, uh, let's think about business, uh, and I've learned marketing within uh, telecom industries, and I moved to retail, doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to transfer. Principles will. The same principle applies here in terms of surfing, broad stance, make sure your feet are in the middle of the board, etc. But you have to adjust those based on the conditions. And that's mastery. It's not just about me knowing a whole lot of stuff, doing a test, getting 80% and I've mastered surfing. No, you've got to go and do it. And that's work-based learning. You are learning while you are doing it and you're, you're adjusting, you're applying. You're constantly thinking about all of this. Now, this is me back in uh, age 13. That picture I showed you of me surfing in Lisbon, that's probably around 30 odd years later. I've learned to master surfing, not just in terms of surfing, but different kinds of boards, different length of boards, understanding what my style is. Do I want a thruster? Do I want a twin fin? Uh, what's the perfect length for me? As I've got older, uh, I've maybe put on weight, I've maybe got taller, uh, adjusting the kind of board that is suited for me, recognizing what kind of waves I like, whether they're beach breaks, uh, reef breaks, whether I prefer to surf natural, which is with your right foot at the back of the board, or whether I prefer goofy waves, and then mastering all the different kinds of things you do on a wave, like a roundhouse cutback, uh, tubes, airs, floaters, and mastering all these different kinds of tricks or, 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 or ways of riding a particular wave. And again, also picking up the etiquette within the ocean. But I'll come back to that a little bit later. All of this is mastery. It doesn't happen overnight, which again is why work-based learning gives you a massive step ahead compared to work-integrated learning. Now, I'm not dissing work-integrated learning. Rather have a placement or an internship than nothing, um, right? Uh, work-integrated learning in terms of employability and getting you ready for work uh, is way better than not having anything at all. But being in work and studying is even that next best step because you, you, you are literally five days a week in that context, mastering the skills. But that mastery doesn't just come naturally, right? It doesn't just come naturally. There are certain things that we have to do in order to ensure that we begin to master those skills. And then we become uh, an expert in something particular. So uh, I became an expert in a particular way of riding my surfboard uh, and my style, right? You could, you could begin to see a style in the way in which I would surf. Now, don't forget mastery. The second thing I want to talk about is what's called tacit knowledge. Now, tacit knowledge is something that already just exists. You, you can't necessarily read it in a book. You can't necessarily study it. And tacit knowledge is often contextual. So depending on which context you're in, the knowledge that you apply here differs. And these are the kinds of things that you, again, you have to just pick them up. Now, tacit knowledge, a really good example of tacit knowledge is balance. 
Um, how do you explain to somebody how to balance, right? Uh, think about, you know, riding a bicycle or, or in this case, surfing. Uh, the person keeps falling off the surfboard. They keep losing their balance. Now, you could say adjust your foot, bend your knees, have a lower stance. But in the end, at the end of the day, the person on the board needs to figure it out. They need to kind of get to grips with that feeling of whether you lean forward, lean back, lean to the left, lean to the right, in order to compensate the movement on the wave in order for you to maintain your balance. That's tacit knowledge. It's learning by doing and figuring out as you go along. Now, again, surfing is a really good example here because, as I said, the waves are always different. Um, a wave that breaks on a beach feels very different to a wave breaking on a reef. Um, the amount of power that is in a wave, the, the kind of wave, whether it's A-frame or whether it's a point or whether it's a beach break, these all differ. Now, in this picture here, I'm surfing an inland lake. So um, this, this wave is produced by a, like a big plow that runs underwater and it creates this wave. It's a very different feel of power in the wave. Um, this is me in, in a place in, in Wales. Uh, I managed to get the wave. I managed to stop, kind of stand up, but I the board was too small for the wave. I needed a bigger board and I was struggling to get onto the face of the wave. So you can see here in the picture, I'm kind of in the water, in the white water, whereas, whereas I want to be ahead of that on the face of the wave. I was really working very hard to adapt what I was used to in terms of the raw ocean. This wave in a lake felt very, very different from what I'd ever experienced anywhere. Now, again, if you do surf and you've you've tried these lake waves, you'll know what, I talk, what I'm talking about. Um, it's a very different way to catch it and a very different feel when you're on it. The energy in the wave uh, ha has less kind of rawness to it than the ocean. Now, again, I could read all about this. I could watch YouTube videos on this, but until I experience it myself, I wouldn't quite understand what it feels like and therefore what adjustments I need to make. Workplace learning, you're in the situation, you're in the experience, but you must learn in the experience and apply that knowledge and see whether that knowledge works in your context and be agile enough and adjust based on what it is you're learning. Now, again, these things don't just happen. They are skills. Mastery doesn't just happen. It's an intention. You want to master something. And often mastery is about watching a, a, an expert, a master. You're a novice. Right. You're taking things for granted. You're making mistakes and that's fine. But you you quite often you need to find a master, somebody you can model, you can watch uh, and learn from them. And tacit knowledge is something that is often picked up in a similar way. I remember sitting down with a student once uh, doing a literature review for the academic work. And I started to talk about how I'm being critical in the way in which I'm engaging. And he paused me and said, there, that, how do you do that? And I looked at him and I said, what? And he said, how do you be critical? I said, what do you mean how to be critical? You just be critical. And he said, but I don't know how to do that. There's quite often when we master something, we just take those kind of skills and knowledge for granted. And for me as an educator and teaching it, uh, I have to find uh, ways in which I make that more explicit, kind of thinking aloud my own uh, ways of processing and, and how this tacit knowledge uh, is just part of what I do and how I do it. This means that our reflective ability really needs to be honed and developed. We do something and then we have to reflect back on what it is we've done. Do we feel we did that well? Do we feel that we could have done something different? And if we could have done something different, what is that? Where we find gaps in our understanding, right? It might be I need more knowledge or it might be that I need insight, wisdom. I might need to speak to somebody. I might need to read a book. I might need to have a discussion. But all of that lies with you, the person. Only you can reflect on your own experience. Other people can help you facilitate that. But at the end of the day, if you don't want to grow, if you don't want to master, if you don't want to continue to develop, it's not going to happen. You need to own that process and you need to develop that uh, ability to be able to reflect. Now, one of the key things about reflection is it often is the things we don't do that well. We call them critical incidences, where uh, a, a breakdown in communication with somebody or uh, we really let ourselves down in something we did. Now, quite often, that vulnerability is, is, is the 
best kind of reflection that can be done. But recognizing that is hard sometimes. Uh, I've seen many times students implode, right? They've, they've made a mistake in one area, but they now see themselves a failure across everything, right? That's imploding. There's no need. There's just no need to generalize like that. You, you just focus on the issue that you've dealt with here that hasn't been done really well and reflect on that. You know, how did you feel about that? Why did you feel that emotion? Who else was involved? What what needs to change? Is it the context? Is it you? Is it both? And there's a number of models that can be used to help us reflect. Now, here's a picture of me trying to get my youngest, my eldest daughter, when she was, uh, I think she was five here, four or five years old. I was trying to get her into surfing. And so I took her out one day. The waves are very small, as you can see down in Brighton. Uh, got her on my longboard, uh, got her standing uh, on the wave. She was, she started standing and then uh, the, the, the wave was catching her and she was she was surfing. What she was not ready and prepared for was the adrenaline, the feeling that you get when you're on a wave. And, and to be honest, this is why I surf that that overall feeling, the adrenaline, but also just being in nature. But the adrenaline for a four year old, you, how do you explain that to them? What it's going to feel like? This hormone rushing through her body freaked her out. She 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 wasn't sure whether she liked it or not, but she knew that she felt something she'd never felt before. A, a sense of fear mixed with 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 elation all at the same time. Um, she never continued <laughs> in reflection. For her, she's not an adrenaline junkie. Um, it's not something that that kind of, you know, uh, she wants to do. Whereas for me growing up, um, particularly in South Africa, being involved in sport, uh, I played rugby and I loved the adrenaline of, of the, the, the the ruck, you know, getting the rugby ball, being chased, chasing somebody else. Uh, I surfed, I skateboarded. So I did quite a lot of the stuff where, where your adrenaline was pumping and I loved it. And to be honest, still to today, I do like doing these kinds of things where you feel a rush of energy uh, in the activities you're doing. That reflection, thinking about your experience, thinking about how that experience relates to you personally is a very important element of work based learning. Again, you can see as we thought about mastery, as we thought about tacit knowledge, as we're thinking about reflection, none of these things are predominantly about knowledge. It's about you working with that knowledge and learning what it means for you in a particular context. I can't emphasize this enough. And so let me move to the final one. Again, what makes work-based learning very different from uh, any other kind of experience, uh, even from work integrated learning, is the fact that it's multidisciplinary. Quite often uh, in terms of a placement or an internship, if you're doing a marketing uh, degree, you'll end up in a marketing company in terms of work experience. But in a multidisciplinary context, you're in work and you normally have to do a number of things across that. You'd probably be involved, particularly as a degree apprentice, you'd be involved in uh, sales, you'd be involved in customer service, you'd be involved in marketing, you'd be involved in operations. And so you're beginning to learn what knowledge is applicable in different contexts and you would learn what needs to be adjusted. You are learning uh, how to apply knowledge in a multidisciplinary context. Now, again, the pictures that I have here up on the screen are pictures of me having surfed all over the place. Top left is Brighton, then Folkestone, uh, then Brighton Marina. Uh, left is Lisbon, right is Jeffreys Bay. Uh, the other one is Australia, um, uh, Bells, uh, not Bells Beach, um, Kira in Australia. <coughs> Um, I've got Morocco on there, I've got Port Elizabeth on there, and then I've got the northern beaches in, in, in Portugal on there. Um, all of these were very different. Um, some of them were beach breaks, some of them were reef breaks, some of them were open ocean, some of them were bays, some of them were harbour mouth. Uh, the bottom right hand corner uh, was a wave in a harbour mouth in Morocco in Rabat. Um, and I had to adjust how these waves felt, how I caught them and what I, how I would surf. Also, being in different contexts, I also had to learn how to behave within those particular cultures, giving respect to the locals, uh, not paddling in on their waves, 
um, and just giving them some space. I'm a guest, I'm a visitor on their waves. And that's multidisciplinary. You begin to learn how to be a professional. You begin to pick up values and ethics and you begin to learn, you begin to master the skills of adapting to different situations. So that's my little introduction. I, I thought it would be worth thinking about this in terms of what it is you're involved in. It's not just about, you know, uh, getting good marks in an assignment. That knowledge is key. It's the ingredients that feed uh, what you're doing in the workplace. But you have to connect that learning with the experiences you're having. You have to think about that in terms of the tacit knowledge, what is not in the books. You have to think about that in terms of, you know, how are you mastering things, the time frame it will take, how you're going to be doing that, thinking about models or mentors, uh, thinking about your own ability to reflect and to be honest and to reflect deeply. Um, to consider how these things influence your, your attitudes, your behaviours, uh, and then finally thinking about what this means across different disciplines, different uh, emphases within the workplace, and how you would need to adjust certain things. Just because one thing works in one way doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work again in a different context. You need to be able to know how to adjust, and that's part of you mastering the different kinds of skills. Brilliant. So I hope that is a helpful analogy. Think about surfing.